This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes Award ceremony, sir. The victim, jo Juan, Juan Corino, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Hmm. After that award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room. Uh, yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant went alone to their room, sir. I see. That's all right. You may begin your cross-examination. Oh, there's nothing there. <laughs> Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal, the ceremony started at 6 p.m. and ended around 8 p.m. and then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start at the in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30 minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. That means he was murdered from somewhere between 8 and 8.30. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Here. Yeah. Who is a this Adrian Andrews we're talking about? She's a defendant, Matt on guard's uh, manager. She's a really pretty lady, sir. Agreed. Ah, oh, so she's pretty. I wonder if she'll grace us with her presence. I hope. When the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. On guard. After visiting his room, she went next to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see. That's when she found the victim's body. The cause of death wasn't that because Mr. Corito was stabbed in the chest. Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good, hard look at the crime photo. Now, the real pro's attention would be drawn here to this bandana. Ah, he was strangled to death. A banana? Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped entirely around his neck, sir. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I see. His bandana... banana scented bada bandana. <laughs> what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm. We have a crafty murderer on our hands here. So that would only be, it's planted there. If he's already dead, there's no point in doing that. It's planted there. Come on. And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal. The jammin' ninja doesn't go anywhere about without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then, about, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime and to get it. That's it. How's that? Um, we thought that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Oh, so much for my theory, then. What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that day. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corita, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. Why'd only take the case? So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he, he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So the guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it had really nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that is enough. First, uh, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, even after the then after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Mm hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why then did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there is a reason enough to suspect him. There, here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Very well, Detective Gunshu, please testify about this. Yes, sir.
Why well, arrest on guard? Not on guard and Juan Corrida were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in, was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jamma Ninja's button. It was ripped off the ninja costume. It was found in Mr. Ongar's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were, always, uh, were also all over this knife. The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Hmm. So the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was a short, sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty easily. Clearly, sir. Hmm. Huh. Convenient. Hey, here's the button. And that was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm. And this the button also covered in blood? Yes, we know that the blood uh, on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? How do you get a button on his... Hmm. Hmm. Suspicious. Planted. Because if you really want to think about it, how would he get a button inside of his costume when he only stabbed him? He would have had to stab him afterwards for the blood to get on said button, and then he would have had to rip off the button. It doesn't make sense. Because he was already dead by the time the button would have already been off, because the struggle would have stopped after he's dead. Unless there's blood on his outfit, it's reason enough to believe that there wasn't anything to prove it. It's planted. All of this points very clearly to defend it, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? <laughs> I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. Trust me, if I can deal with Von Karma, I can deal with you, buddy. You can press as hard as you'd like. Just hurry up with your usual you pointless questions. Uh-huh. Why rest on guard? But in terms of popularity, Mr. On Guard won, did he not? Yeah, but you know what's ironic, pal. Juan Carita was always uh, one step behind Mr. On Guard in everything. This year it seemed like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Carita lost the Grand Prix in the end. That's too bad. He must have been pretty downhearted after losing. Wait just in one second here. Miss Strongguard was beating Mr. Corita in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defendant's eyes, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all. Hmm. Yes, I quite agree. Well, detective? It's not well. I guess if you put it that way, then yeah, the defendant wouldn't would have had no motive. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Uh, no, no, not you too, Mr. Edworth. Uh, so that's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. No! Now then, Detective, let's continue with the testimony. No, not my poor pension too. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Yes, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. About what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? Nothing? Nothing? Okay. Good. Good to know. Do you have any proof that the button belonged to the victim? Huh? I don't get you, pal. Oh? Let me put it this way. I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up your claim that this button was ripped off the German Ninja's costume. Oh, but can you tell just by looking at it? And the victim blood's on, victim's blood's on it. Anyone could have smeared that blood on it afterward. Mr. Edgeworth, help me, sir. All right, I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Thread. Hmm? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the end of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Yeah, that's it. They're a perfect match, pal. Ugh. That's Edgeworth for you. Never miss a beat. I don't believe that. 
Oh, well, when was this button found? Very soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Corita. And then we did a search for them all, on them all. That's when we found the button. Hmm. So it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the, have the free time to lollygag and play tricks unlike some people. Hey, what is he trying to say about me here? How are the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Huh? What do you mean, pal? By examining the fingerprints, you can, you can determine how the defendant, defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh, is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony, right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There's no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Hmm. So the defendant, the owner of the knife, then. There's no way this was a premeditated murder, even if he brought the knife. Sorry, pal, this isn't just a pocket knife. It's not really useful for anything, and you can't just walk around with it either. Oh, well, this is not good. If the prosecution can prove it was premeditated murder, we're done for. Phoenix. Yeah? There's something very interesting about what the detective just said now. Think carefully before it's too late. A button covered in the victim's blood and a knife with guard's fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gavel in closing. We're still in a world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. Let's try and find the weakness of his testimony, no matter how small it may be, okay, right? What's the evidence we can break him? Uh, oh, this is just like a steak knife they have. You can't, it wasn't on guard's knife. Bought the knife at the crime. Bought. Kept forgetting it was brought. And it's, he, didn't, he didn't buy it. Wait a second. What? So the basis of your argument for the, that this was premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand. That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Huh. It has Gatewater seal set into the handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. Uh oh. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel, which means this murder was not premeditated. Well, it very well could have been, but... Yes, this is true. This is a very big... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There's no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't know. Oh. oh. The question is... <laughs> where did this knife come from? Why is that obvious? I came to... for uh, it, it came from the victim, Mr. Corita's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered, with that being the case. I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. There's a knife and a fork on the table. Then... Where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Mathangar. Especially what was on top of his table. There's something missing. Perhaps it was a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Madongard's knife was missing. 
Mr. On Guard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he'd used during dinner and would carry a knife on a... Why would he carry a knife uh, on a visit? Like, to kill, obviously. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven that this was a premeditated murder. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. Seems like Edgeworth had, pl had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked in headlong into it. Murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There's quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your time, Your Honor. However, although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown. He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Oh, well. Phoenix. The judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, the, that gavel of this will be ringing out with the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of, something important and necessary to present to the court? There's one. One piece of evidence that catches my attention, something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance, and only one. What the judge is saying, Wright, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtains for all of us. Oh my god. What is this important piece of evidence that you must show to the court? Oh, Jesus. Uh, fuck. Take that save. I want to save suicide report. Sorry, right, but this time your bluffing steered you wrong. Are you fucking kidding me? It's a wine glass, is it not? Thank God, I finally got it. Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because the victim struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken, his makeup was all over the floor, and these are all things that were all at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that's sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over, along with everything else, is the wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well, what do you all have to say? Oh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Yes, it, yes, it isn't it. I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now, Mr. Edgeworth. What is it, your honor? Your opinion? You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked, shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm. That does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? No! If I appear weak here, the trial's over. I can look at my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. They just might fall for it. If you're thought-provoking enough. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see some something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. You've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. I'm like Mr. Wright. I never say anything unless I have evidence to support it. What? You're not thinking hard enough today, Wright. Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Then. Of course it has been thoroughly inspected. For fingerprints. There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? 
They were not the victims nor the defendants. Rather, they were of one, Adrian Andrews. Could she not have killed him, please? What? That is why I said that the person who discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Oh, I can't believe I fell into another trap. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corita. And upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. What you just said makes a lot of sense. Disc, disc, disc. Now do you see right? You can't change any part of my scenarios. It explains everything all too well. I've thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I've come to discover. Wait a sec, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. No. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution is yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness. Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Edgeworth thinking? He wants, he wants the perfect victory. Oh, fuck. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Ugh. Hey. Gotcha! Hmm. I wonder what happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Oh, Angie boy, I've been what, what a year since we last met, hasn't it? We well, should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that, uh, who knew that under the helmet? Who's the wicked witch of the witness stand? I tell you that this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today I'm going to tell you everything and anything and everything. Even things that don't have to do with the, that terrible crime. This witness, that terrible crime is all the court needs to know. I'm talking to my dear edgy wedgy right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Yes, ma'am, even though I think I'm technically younger than you. No, 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 please, by all means, interrupt her, please. Anyway, witness your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that the youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, Angie. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail on the hotel the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dear Yuan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean you are a fan of the victim? Look, everyone is crazy over that unguard saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me, I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Corita. Those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was uh, pacing in front of his room that night. Very well, please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to the went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was a, there was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye on the whole thing. Time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard, mad on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Hmm. So Mr. On Guard came out of the vi from the victim's room. See, it was it must be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Miss Old Bag, what was your post on that night? The lobby. I was supposed to be set up in the lobby for that st for up the stage for that trifling show. If I refused to help, I'll have you know it was from the for that lead-headed samurai show. <laughs> I even took out a few of his na of the nails. Maybe it was a good thing the show didn't go on. Besides, that manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it, working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. 
And that's when you went to hang around the victim store? Uh, something you were interested in. And just what was that? It's not some um, little thing I could just go around telling everyone, you know. It's top secret between me and Juan. And, uh, oh, and Edgy, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is she th the thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip. If this has something to do with the case, then you can append it to your testimony. Looks like we should enforce it right now. The witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time. So we can force it later. Oh, then would you tell us the number of people who went in and out of Mr. Corita's room? I have no idea. I wasn't born, so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's uh, why ever since I turned 20, I kept... I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Yes, well, that would explain why your age was not record recorded in the report. <laughs> is it still not right there? It is. <laughs> oh, God, amazing. Adrian, Ant Adrian Andrews, only 23. That's pretty good for 23. You can't lie. Anyways, uh, in any case, Edgeworth's got the same idea. Uh, the witness then saw someone, correct? Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. The man that came out of one's room. It was... He was... Yes, he was. Oh, I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have Francisca's whip right now. Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy anyway. You saw my client. Are you sure about that? Yes, yeah, see. Really? Annoying brat, when I say I saw someone, I saw the person. Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Because last time you said you saw someone, you didn't see him. Maybe I... Maybe to avoid a mess like last year, I should delve into this a bit further. <laughs> the person's face. Please tell me the court about the man's face in more detail. You don't need to tell... You don't need me to tell you about his face. That soft, gentle look in his eyes and his effeminate lips. His right eye covered by his silky hair, his sparkling, shiny teeth. His teeth were shiny? Well, he's shining all around in this week's pinup poster, dearie. This week's pinup? Why do you... I mean, not... No. I don't care how he looks in this week's issues. Please tell me what you saw that night. What? On guard's face is the same, no matter where it is, right, you whippersnapper? Mr. Wright, is this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? It is very important. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Objection! Shut up, Edward. Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. You don't really have to put it that way to get me to say. Mr. Wright, there is something much more valuable than a person's pride, and that is time. Please don't waste this court's precious time with worthless, worthless questions. Yes, Your Honor, I think I just wasted his good favor. She may not remember things or be mistaken here and there, but I don't think she's lying. It's bad for us, really bad. But that's how the human mind is. It also has the tendency to jump off topic. She's straight off onto a few interesting side topics this time too, hasn't she? But that's what makes her a sweet old lady, right? That's because you're not the one who has to question her. You know shit. Let's go ahead and pop her with this news article. Witness day, yeah. I just wanted. Fuck. Must be on the wrong track. I do want to actually see something real quick. I want to press this. I want to see if I can't ask her what he was wearing. the person's clothes like? Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What troublesome man you are, really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, now that it, what was it? Oh, yes, it was that thing. That thing? 
That gaudy thing he's always wearing, that racing jacket. Boom. Oh, he was wearing that at the detention center, too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Hmm, man. Oh, right. So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Yes, actually it was. Of course it was, Your Honor. And perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Where's the button? Your Honor, I request that the witness said about the jacket and pen to her testimony. I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right, witness, please. Oh, well, I don't think like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. This old bag? Why? Don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? No, it's a button uh, number two uh, on the uh, Jam and Ninja's costume. How the fuck do you know that? What the hell? Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified in a simple glance. Give it here, give it here. If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this. Wow, she really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. She probably f lick it. This button was discovered on Mr. On Guard's body during a full body search. See, you see, this button proves beyond a shadow of doubt it was that ra rascal on guard. Yeah, it was caught up in the pleats of the Nickel Samurai Hakama pants. See, see, and on guard is the Nickel Samurai. <sighs> About that, witness. Now it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination. Which is now, did you say that the defendant, Matt on guard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? Ah, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear. If I wore the trendiest dress, then maybe I would go, Oh my god, that's ridiculous, you'd agree. This outfit is hideous, right? I've got tape recorders stuck to my chest. It's heaving so heavy, so heavy. Dream alive for all these kids out there. I work hard with the face I have. Understand, now take a look in the mirror. Documentary of curling, edgy poo, he's awful. Now hold your tongue still, there are there for a second. So what you saw is an actuality he was not Mr. On Guard, the man. But Mr. On Guard, the Nickel Samurai, not again. Not another one of these stupid things. But when you think about it, they're really one and the same anyway. This old bag, that's a very important point we're talking about. Edgy Poo, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth thinking about. You say it's important and agree with me for a change. Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Alright, if you insist. I should be the one sighing, not you. Damn old bag. <laughs> 